So I was looking back at the catalog and it's been a couple of years since we've talked about the altar forms. So that's what we're on today. We're gonna be ranking every single altar form so far. Of course, that's gonna be excluding the duplicates and the servants that have showed up in JP. I don't play JP and I'm not about to spoil myself just to make this video. Now, for our first competitor, we have Lalter, Lancer Artoria Alter. Now I know a lot of people are gonna get pissed off at this, and honestly, I don't care. <laughs> I really don't. So here's the thing, you guys are familiar with the way that I scale my videos, I go by feats and skills, and then we talk about the power. I don't care what you could have did, what you should have did, what you're thinking about doing, I care about what you did. And the fact of the matter is, she ain't do shit. Now, is that her fault? No. For some reason, I feel like they just made her character and it's almost like they forgot about her. You know, she only shows up in the first half of Grand Order. She comes to us in a couple of events and even then her role isn't that impactful. Even if I were to reach and base it off of the real Lion King, it's already been stated that she only has a fraction of the true Lion King's power. So that really wouldn't be accurate either. If I were going strictly off of power, she would be somewhere near the top of the list. She has Rongo many it which we know rivals Excalibur in strength but since she has nothing to show for and that's only the London singularity which we just beat her and she gets out the way until she gets some more feats I gotta leave her at the bottom next up we got Atalanta so a good portion into the way that she thinks is in Lost Belt 1 she doesn't really have any real threats in the Lost Belt to her specifically I will say that there is a segment where they went against servant level or pre sneak that's about as far far as that goes we do however know from the way that she handles logistics that she's quick on her feet she's capable of making good decisions the way that she was able to find hidden paths and materials lets us know that she can be good under pressure the other half being an apocrypha you know this is when she goes off the rails and she makes her transformation out of her archer state when she goes up against joan for the most part we know that joan she is ruler class but joan is still a mostly defensive spirit any feats against joan really wouldn't be that spectacular anyway because she's not actually trying to fight back she's just trying to survive then you have the fact that even if she was capable of beating joan she wouldn't because joan had a narrative purpose to stay alive right she had to use her la pucelle against shiro so she wouldn't have beat her anyway but at the very least you know she always kept her on her toes and when she went up against achilles you can say the same thing she is an incredible archer and you're not just gonna put some average joe next to her and that's in her regular form in her altar form she's even more terrifying and when she went against achilles i know a lot of people really didn't pay attention to this because it was about achilles but she was landing some severely fatal hits against achilles while they were fighting the story tells us several times that she was piercing his vital organs if it was another servant he wouldn't have survived the thing about achilles Achilles is that he was just ignoring the pain. All in all, she still was contending with the ruler and she still contended with Achilles who is a top servant. He was fatigued from his previous fight. She was fatigued as well from fighting with Joan. It all comes full circle. Next up, we got the guy Emiya Alter who is a version of Shiro that strives so long for his goals that he ended up losing his humanity. He falls more in line with the Kirisugu train of thought, meaning he's going to do whatever it takes he is a counter guardian but i do want to point out that the counter force is going to empower you with just enough to get the job done so that doesn't mean that he's busted or anything like that in fact if we're going just by his base parameters they're actually pretty bad which is crazy considering that he has one of the highest body counts on this list just going off the introduction in shinjuku we know that he off screen two darkened servants the moment that he arrived that being the Lancer and the Saber from Moriarty's group, the Phantom Demon Alliance. He later takes out the Phantom of the Opera, straight nuking him with the bomb that he had planted inside. We know that he took out Moriarty's Meteor, which in the chapter 
specifically had enough power to blow up the entire planet via the Earth's core. The thing about this is that while Salter was the one that swept up the debris, Emia was the one that bust open the meteor on his own mares, that being unlimited loss works. You have the Serve chapter where he tactfully immobilized Tomacat by hitting her spirit origin with one of his bullets. He has access to a five kilometer cable that he used to help save Meltralis. He executed a few of the Seraphix members with no restraint. He survived a fatal wound from the beast Kiara and then fended off one of Kiara's demon god hairs which we know can take you out in one hit. Then turned around and executed Kiara on top of that by landing the finishing blow. All of this despite having his injury from before. So it goes without saying that his ability to survive is top notch. Then we have Jalter. Joan of Arc altar she is an altar form created by jill using the grail and the hundred years singularity she has access to a number of powers that she wouldn't normally have the great dragon fafner several wyvern being able to summon seven servants under her wing that operate on her accord despite these being boosts that she was able to make with the power of the grail she does still have merits on her own from the time that we get there she hunted down the priest pierre and burned him alive she beat Siegfried, who we know was able to match the demigod Karna for several hours straight. Her flame phantasm has great coverage, being able to trap the spirit Hessian Lobo long enough for us to fight. It's in your best interest that you don't get caught in this. I mean, if we're just looking at Emya Alter, she had Emya Alter on the run. He was gonna use her to his advantage, and he was like, man, her phantasm is so good that I'd rather just not deal with her at all. And he retreated to the nearby skyscraper. And even after he retreated, he still could feel the flames, and she was on the ground. He's at the top of the skyscraper, and she's on the ground, and he can still feel her phantasm. That's how much coverage she has. She survived several fatal back-to-back -back wounds from the composite Avenger, Hessian Lobo. This is after he was combined with Invisible Man, making him even stronger than he was before. Then we have Salter, Saber Alter. She's one of those characters that's kind of grown into her own thing. The thing about Salter is that she was a servant of Sakura. And with Sakura being the second grail, Salter by extension had an unlimited mana supply. That's what really made her so good. Without that, she's just a more brass version of Saber. If you look at her stats, you'll see a decrease in agility and luck in exchange for mana and strength. We know that she took out several lives from Hurt. You might be thinking, oh, that's only because she had the reserves to do it well you got to remember the fate route where as her saber form she took six lives from hurt at once and that was using caliburn which is weaker than excalibur morgan so to be honest her taking multiple lives from hurt isn't that much of a stretch she might not take as many but she definitely would have took a couple anyway you got her role at the beginning of fgo where she single-handedly beat every other servant in the war don't get it twisted she will bring those problems if we're looking at shinjuku we had emia himself mention that if you think jalter is a problem then salter is even worse than that and he was running from jalter this is the person that had several bodies as i mentioned before she's the one that helped get rid of the debris from the meteor which was still capable of destroying the entire singularity this did take her life but again this is after an entire singularity's worth of work you better better come step in the right way. Then there's Mysterious Heroine X Alter. She is a gag character that happens to come from our Star Wars event. She's literally Space Artoria, but Alter. She has incredible base parameters except her luck, and even that's not bad, it's just average. She's extremely powerful, not only having access to Excalibur as a lightsaber, but she's also able to manifest literal creatures from parallel worlds to fight for her. In the Servant version, she actually went up against Lancelot in a 1v1, beat him, and threw him into space. 
<laughs> so for all the people that would think Lancelot would automatically just curb stomp Artoria, you got another thing coming. That's another huge misconception that I see a lot. Just because somebody is stronger or more skilled doesn't mean that they can't lose. And just because a person loses doesn't make them any less strong. It could fall completely on circumstances. You know, in Fate, it gets more complicated than that. You have Okita Alter, who is also a counter guardian. Now, originally, Okita Alter was yet another gag character that ended up making her way into the real stories. There has been some slight shifts in the way that she conducts her behavior because of that fact. At first, she was this all-encompassing being that got the job done, and then she got out the way. Now, in Grand Order, they tried to give her a bit of humanity, and it started to kind of show gaps in her skill set. You know, she had a bout with Iza Okada, and she was hardly able to defend herself. Same thing goes with Nobu. We do know that she helped face off against the demon god Makuzu, which is literally said to be on the level of a god because it's empowered by the grail. This entity will be stronger than Nobu and Izo combined. So that alone puts her on another plane. Back in Fate Koha Ace, she actually took this creature out all on her own. In the newer versions, they had her do this with help. She is the highest level of Okita that we will possibly ever see, and her phantasm is so powerful that it can reach the realm of nothingness. You have the statement from Ryoma saying that she's on a completely different level. You can hardly even gauge it. Then we got Ku Alter, the embodiment of I Could Care Less. Ku Alter is an absolute monster. He too was empowered by the Grail, making his scaling get kind of weird. We do know that he eviscerated pretty much anything that fell in his path. He beat Nero in her own reality marble and tossed her to to the side he brutally wounded skahawk his own teacher for 90 percent of her health forcing her to make a retreat he nearly took out mash until merlin had to intervene and displace his entire phantasm even at the start of the singularity we find out that he fatally wounded the great hero rama nearly gouging out his entire heart the dude was just on a rampage for the entire chapter so just think cool with ridiculous amounts of power and he has help from his gear on top of that. Now you know you gotta make way for a true demon, Alcides, Heracles Alter. He is a character that shows up in Fate Strange Fate, if you're familiar with Heracles, you already know he's one of the strongest servants in Fate. This version being stronger than the one shown in Stay Night. At the cost of his immortality, he has access to a phantasm for each one of his labors, so he has 12 different phantasms, some of which we haven't even seen yet. He has access to his own pet familiar. No, it is not just some bird. It is the three-headed hellhound Cerberus. He pulled up on Gil in the the story and told him he was trash the same guild that everybody puts on a pedestal the same guild that everybody for some reason believes is the only good servant in fate yeah he said you're weak i'm gonna need you to show me something different Gil was like oh and who are you supposed to be your worst nightmare nice to meet you i won't even take this fight serious until you pull out Aya. until then this is just jokes to me but this time around he's not being held back by Ilya, not being held back by his madness and he has all of his phantasms and lastly can we get a round of applause arjuna alter god juna unlike most of the people in fate arjuna is a spirit that's composed entirely from the lost belt we normally shouldn't have him but all of this is fiction anyway so it really doesn't matter regardless i'll say it right now he is without a doubt one of the strongest spirits in fate period he has nearly every god from the hindu pantheon including primordials like shiva and vishnu inside of him he has access to a phantasm that can conceptualize collapse the entire world itself in the lost belt he's done this multiple times the lost belt itself being india that would mean that he was collapsing all of india and he did this several times over and over again with the help of the fantasy tree had the lost belt successfully covered proper history then that would be him collapsing the entire earth now for most servants when they talk about taking down the entire planet they usually just mean taking off a texture 
or a layer of the planet you know fate normally operates in layers instead of them talking about blowing up the entire planet to pieces that's why i usually use the word devastate but in god juna's case you got to understand that like i said while they make him look like he's not as strong as he actually is sometimes he would be the character that could actually blow up the planet if you look at his regular form this man can literally create warps in space that destroys everything that's around it shiva is a god that can destroy the entire universe and god juna has that deity inside of him so destroying earth would be nothing but again for the people who don't know he's not supposed to exist he wasn't on our side to begin with so it's like well why don't you just call on him he was the enemy that was the whole point we did get him as a servant just for the sake of having him but that's all that truly is he even ended the world while we were in the lost belt and karna was able to protect us through his ties in the story and he still died so there's that karna had to get a ton of buffs before he was able to even harm him there is no one on this list that can compare to him some of the grands couldn't even compare to him orion obliterated we're gonna keep running the polls let me know what you guys want to see if you want to see some more weakest to strongest videos we can do that or we can just go down the line and see which ones you guys want the most i did want to throw in galahad altar but he just came out so we'll just have to wait a little bit on that